You may have an e-bike controller like this without a pedal assist system, but you want to have a pedal assist system on your e-bike. You may have a home assistant running at your house. And if you have a cheap little ESP module like this, you can easily make a programmable DIY pedal assist system. So let's see how to make this programmable DIY pass module. Here's the circuit. For this build I'm using a Wemos D1 Mini with a ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. You can also use other ESP modules. I chose D1 and D5 pins for input and output since these pins behave normally when powering the module. I placed two optocouplers on both sides to have current separation and some protection. Input side is very easy, nothing special here. Output side has two important capacitors to smooth out the PWM output signal and any gaps between signal updates. Don't put any bigger capacitor on the output signal, that will get your throttle stuck. To smooth out voltage even more, you could try replacing that 4.7 capacitor with a bigger one since this capacitor is not connected to the signal output. I have tested a lot of different capacitors and this is the last working setup that made me very happy. Now let's build this module. To save space, I decided to place the ESP module on a PCB board and hide all the small components under the ESP module. You may do it differently. I used a couple of basic screw connectors for attaching wires. Soldering these small tabs requires an iron with a narrow tip. I used just some random optocouplers I found laying around. Now if your ESP module has a USB connector, you should use that for power input since it has a 3.3 volt regulator and some protection circuitry. If your ESP module does not have a USB connector, then you need to build a power supply for this system. More on that later in this video. Now this module is ready for connecting for the first time. Connect signal wires like this. You need a couple of diodes. That way you will be able to use a pedal assist system and a regular throttle at the same time. Connect the module to the 5 volt rail on your controller. You can take that power from the throttle wires and nothing will happen. At this point I found out that my e-bike controller does not supply enough current to boot up the ESP module. I really wanted to continue testing, so I came up with a fast and dirty solution. I took a small lithium battery and a charger module with a voltage booster. I had these components just laying around, so quickly I made a 5 volt power buffer for this project. Basically, this is a power bank. Now this is not a permanent solution. If you use this setup for a longer time, it will overload the 5 volt regulator in your controller. And after some time, it will stop working. For a permanent solution, later I will add a 48 volt to 5 volt step down power module. If you don't have a USB connector on your ESP module, you need to step that down to 3.3 volts. Then remember to still keep the output signal connected to the 5 volt rail on your throttle wires. Now when I got some power to the pass module, first I decided to find out what values I should use for the initial configuration. And after a couple of days of testing, I came up with the final configuration on the software side. Now to be able to use my configuration, you need to flash ESP Home firmware to this module. If you don't know how to do that, click on the link in the description, it's super easy. Now let's look at the configuration. I will also place that in the description for you to use. Go to USB Home interface and press here to edit configuration. First, you should set static IP for your module that will decrease the time needed for the ESP module to connect to Home Assistant. But this is not necessary. In this configuration, I removed the fallback access point option since I don't want to be riding around with an active Wi-Fi access point. I also set the API reboot to two hours that can be even longer. Then let's configure our pass sensor input. I used a pulse counter platform since this is the best choice. I did try a pulse width platform and that did not work properly at all. Now I used one second for the update interval. This is suitable for me. Don't lower that because it will affect the readings when you spin pedals at low RPMs. Next, I configured the working range and made this automation to turn power on. These values worked for my pass sensor with 12 magnets, but you may experiment with that. Also, your speed shifter position affects this a lot. I always use the same speed on my e-bikes you may not. Then I made two automations to cut power off if RPMs are outside of the working range. This cuts power 
off when pedaling stops. And also this cuts the power off if pedals move too fast, if for example pushed hard by accident while standing still. Also here is a filter option that makes this sensor work a little bit better. Next I configured the output. I am using PWM output because I want to be able to program the amount of voltage sent to the controller. This makes it possible to create automations for different power levels and other programmable features. Now I did experiment with the frequency and pulse width a lot. This is what works best for me. In this setup, voltage level is controlled by increasing or decreasing max power by just a couple of points. I didn't want to make the frequency any higher, but I guess it may be even higher. This is what works very well with those capacitors in the circuit. Voltage is smooth and level is easily adjusted. One more thing I added was a small safety feature. This puts the output to zero on boot up. I am not sure if that works, but at least I had no output glitches when connecting power to the module. Now when you are done configuring, press save and wait until you see a message that configuration is in fact saved. Then press close. Validate your code. And upload it over the air. When it's done, just close the window to avoid overloading Home Assistant with logs every one second. Also, you can disable logging in configuration to save resources of the ESP module. Now, when all is done, let's get ready for a test. Later, I will put this module inside a waterproofed case. Now, here I test how the power cuts off. Works great with that one second update interval. Now check it out a little closer. Great! And there you have it! This system works very well. The best thing is that you could expand this to do all kinds of cool things. For example, use the voltage sensor on this module to create a cruise control system. And of course, if you want, you can create automations in Home Assistant. For example, to sense the presence of your e-bike or the state of charging battery. Tell me in the comments if you have any questions. I will be glad to help you. Please like and subscribe. Many thanks for watching.